So for those of you that are not aware, I've been using the iPad Pro as my main computer since 2018 and with iPadOS 13. I love the way it looked, how it worked, and for my personal use case at that point, the iPad Pro was enough. But I know that a lot of people, especially back then, were still kind of hesitant to say, hey, the iPad can be my computer. But with every iteration of iPadOS to 14, 15, 16, and now 17, Apple has slowly added new features that changes the way that you kind of view the iPad and they've added new accessories as well, like the Magic Keyboard. So with iPadOS 17, I've been using it for about a week now, and what I wanna show off are some of the features that I think are gonna help people go from being just a macOS user to then maybe using the iPad as their main form of computer. Now again, it's not for every single person, depending on your workflow, your use case, whatever you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis, it could change and macOS could be the better version for you, but some of the changes on iPadOS 17 that went under the radar are really gonna help change the way you view iPadOS and the iPad Pro as a computer and not just a tablet. So without further ado, let's talk about these features, go into them a little bit deeper, and talk about the nuances and as to why it's gonna help you make the iPad your main computer. Let's get into it. So the first feature that I do want to mention is Stage Manager. So Stage Manager came to iPad, it came with iPadOS 16 and can be used with any iPad Pro from 2018 or newer, as well as any M-powered iPad, so that includes the M1 iPad Air. But with Stage Manager and iPadOS 17, yes, on the surface, it kind of looks the same from a functionality standpoint, but if you have been using iPadOS 16 and you have been using Stage Manager, especially with extended monitor support on the M-series iPads, you'll know that Stage Manager was still kind of a wonky experience. Yes, it lets you have some floating windows. Yes, you could have four apps open at the same time, as well as an additional four sets of four applications on that little shelf on the left-hand side, but it was still a little bit wonky in terms of how Apple made you interact with those windows, right? There was only a certain level of customization in terms of the size of the windows, so there's only like seven to 12 different versions of that app that you could use in different sizes. And then on top of that, Apple still kept their like inertia in their software, which basically means when you open up one app, it's gonna be front and center. So if you had one application and you wanted to move it off to the right-hand side or the left or up or down, the software would not let you do that and it would kind of spring it back into the center or some form of bringing things to the middle for that software and for that window. So with iPadOS 17, Apple seems to have taken off the training wheels, right? With iPadOS 16, I saw the reasoning as to why they did that because they wanted to show off this new kind of interface and make it as easy as possible to recognize and to kind of use overall, but it ended up making things a little bit more complicated in my opinion. With iPadOS 17, Apple said, hey, we saw your feedback, we now know what people use Stage Manager for, and people wanna be able to use it like normal windows. So the first thing that we did see is that we now have way more variation in terms of the sizes of these applications. You can get really, really small and you can go very big without going full screen as well. And also you can go full screen with these applications. So the variability in terms of size of those windows from a vertical and horizontal standpoint, being able to change the size diagonally as well is a great added bonus because now it feels like they're free flowing windows. And then the main thing that they did was they got rid of that inertia in the software. So what that means is if you open the Twitter application on your own and you wanna stick it off to the right hand side, you can now do that and move it to any part of the screen that you want to with it being whatever size. So it's much easier to interact with. It kind of feels a lot more familiar overall. People are gonna be a lot more used to it versus somebody from iPadOS 16 that kind of got a little confused with how the windowing worked with these different applications in iPadOS 16. So in my opinion, Stage Manager is a very full-fledged way of multitasking with the iPad. Some people are still gonna wanna go with the split view of the classic multitasking. Some people are still gonna wanna do the slide overview, but I think Stage Manager, especially if you have the larger 12.9 inch iPad, and if you're able to use the extended monitor support, I think is a game changer because A, you have your free flowing windows finally. You have the ability to change those window sizes a lot easier with a lot more variability and customization. And then the feel and interactivity between the applications just makes sense. It's very similar to Mac OS. For instance, if you have one application hovering over the one on the back, if you just move your mouse to the one on the back, you're able to then interact with it without bringing it forward. So it's very familiar things like that. And then you have your multitasking menu, which is those three dots on that application itself, which basically lets you move the app to a different location. It lets you close the app completely. It lets you move it off to the side to then open up another one. And it lets you move it over to the app shelf as well. So people are gonna get used to this. I'm a big fan of it. I use Stage Manager on a daily basis, especially with the extended monitor support. So definitely give it a try if you're lucky enough to be able to use iPadOS 7 right now. And in that same light with trying to make iPadOS 17 much more computer-like and much more familiar, Apple finally gave us the ability to use third-party cameras as your FaceTime camera for now, but ideally into other applications. So for right now, if you want to use your DSLR or a 1080p or 4K webcam, you're able to do that just by plugging it in via either a USB-C cable like a Thunderbolt cable 
or with your classic dongle, whether it is a USB-A or anything like that. So in being able to do that now natively, it's gonna automatically switch to that camera. There's nothing that you need to touch in the settings, but for right now, it only works with Apple's FaceTime, but we will be getting it for third-party applications like Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Google Meets and things like that. So another great added bonus, which makes the iPad experience much more computer-like and lets other people kind of come in now that you can finally put the webcam where it's supposed to be, which is supposed to be in landscape mode right in the center. But now a quick word from our sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike was one of the first iPad accessory companies that I ever tried. They've been around for years, giving us the best screen protectors that money can buy. Obviously their bread and butter is their Paperlike screen protector. They were the first to introduce their NanoDoc tech, which is what gives you that amazing clarity with no glare on the screen. And also is what gives the screen protector its iconic Paperlike feel. You can hear it and it feels like you're putting a number two pencil right on paper. Now they recently released their Pro Bundle. This includes their screen protector, which includes two screen protectors, but it also brings their new cleaning kit, which is amazingly well designed. It's an all-in-one screen cleaner that gives you a spray bottle wrapped in microfiber material. Just pull it out of the case, spray and wipe, and all your fingerprints are absolutely gone. Lastly, it brings their Apple Pencil Grips, which comes in two different sizes included in the packaging. One smaller one for precision, and then the larger one that's built for comfort. Best of all, you can still magnetically charge and attach your Apple Pencil too when these grips are on, so they've thought of everything. So if you know someone that just got an iPad or you just got yourself one or you just want to enhance your current iPad experience, this Pro Bundle is going to go a long way and it's a must for iPad users. If you want to support myself and this channel, click the Paperlike link below to check out these products. So thank you to Paperlike for partnering up with 9to5Mac and now back to the video. I'm excited that we finally got Paperlike as a sponsor on the channel. I have been working with them for a very long time, but now with the new Paperlike products, you can now go into the Notes application. And a big thing that was brought over on iPadOS 17 was the ability to now fully edit PDFs natively inside of the Notes application, which is something that we've never had before. You've always been able to scan documents, turn them into PDFs, and maybe annotate them and draw on them. But now you have the autofill feature, which is gonna be very easy to use. You have the ability to collaborate in real time. So you can highlight text, circle text, cross stuff out. So if you're working on some contract material, you need your legal team to look at some verbiage, you can highlight some stuff in that contract. Or if you're editing a resume with somebody else, you need to tell them like, hey, add this, this, and this, and remove these points, you can do that as well. And then obviously the best perk, which I think is gonna be a game changer for a lot of people, especially as students for the most part, is being able to A, take a picture of a document that needs to be filled out so it scans into a PDF and then it auto fills and lets you kind of fill it in digitally and then email it or send it off to wherever it needs to be sent. So that workflow is gonna be awesome. And the fact that you don't have to leave a native Apple application to get that done, is gonna be a game changer for a lot of people. So there's no more third party PDF editors, unfortunately, unless you need to get real granular with some of this stuff. But for the most part, the PDF editor inside the Apple Notes application will be able to get the job done and then some. And then one last cool feature that Apple finally brought to the Notes application is being able to link to other notes in your Notes app. So let's say you start a new note and you're taking down notes for maybe your current class that you're taking, but you wanna reference back to a class that happened maybe two weeks ago or reference back to a meeting that happened a week ago. You can now physically link that note from a week ago or two weeks ago into your current note. So all I have to do is open up the link. So all I have to do is insert a link. It's gonna ask you what you wanna insert. You can type in the title of that note application. It's gonna autofill click on it, and then you have a link that takes you directly to that other note, which is a great feature, which we've seen other applications use, but now that it's built into the Notes application, it's gonna be a very nice feature for a lot of people. So now let's get into some other computer-like features that Apple brought over to iPadOS 17. So if you're a big Safari user, then you might've noticed that we did get profiles on iOS and iPadOS 17 finally. So what that means is that whether maybe you share your iPad with somebody else, or you just wanna have different profiles for different parts of the day, or different like mindsets, you can now create a profile in Safari that lets you know like, hey, maybe you have your work profile, similar to focus modes. So you have your work profile in Safari. So all your work websites, maybe your like ERP system and your email and you know your CRM and things like that are all loaded up in this profile. But then once you leave that one and go to your personal profile, now you're looking at maybe some of the stuff you've been working on on a personal basis, or maybe some more leisure kind of websites or some blogs you like to read, maybe some nine to five blogs and things like that. Being able to have dedicated profiles, maybe, like I said, if you share an iPad in the house, maybe you can have a profile for different people in your actual family so they can share the same iPad. You'll be able to have a profile for person one, a profile for person two, and so on and so forth. I think that's a great feature that's coming for Safari, especially for those power Safari users. I know applications like Chrome have had that for a very long time, but now it's coming over to iPadOS 17 in Safari. Now let's briefly talk about the lock screen and the widgets that Apple finally brought from iOS 16 over to iPadOS 17. 
This doesn't make it any more computer-like or anything like that. I just like that Apple brought it over to iPad OS, and it's gonna give people more customization and the feeling of being able to make their iPad theirs versus kind of just having a blank wallpaper. Because in my opinion, the lock screen on the iPad has been the biggest waste of space on such a beautiful screen and a beautiful canvas that we've seen in a long time. So now being able to add widgets, being able to add, being able to have a left-hand side, kind of like the Today View, a little homage to that, which was one of my favorite features on iPad OS 13. So that customization is now a welcome addition. But the bigger one is the interactive widgets on your actual home screen. So as of right now, the only ones that I'm seeing that are actually adopting this are Apple native applications. So one good example that I use a lot is being able to control your smart lights directly from your HomeKit widget. You don't have to go into HomeKit anymore and tap on the actual light or maybe a thermometer that you wanna change. Now you're just one step away from turning off and on a light versus having to take two, three steps to do the same action inside of the HomeKit app. So interactive widgets are gonna go a long way in my opinion. So think to-do list, think streak checkers that they were showing off in Apple's keynote, but maybe eventually you'll be able to actually take the quick note, which we have on the bottom right hand corner. But instead of that, it'll be just a live kind of note widget that you can just write on whenever you please, or a music widget, things like, like that are gonna be very beneficial for people that like to have widgets on their home screen. And then two more features, which I do wanna round off this video with. The first one is the enhancements to AirDrop. I don't care too much about being able to airdrop with the new name drop stuff, being able to airdrop your contact information, but the biggest thing that I've noticed, especially between iOS 17 and iPadOS 17, is just how much faster the transfer is of these data sets. Like for instance, I use my 4K camera on my iPhone and then airdrop everything to my actual iPad. Some of those are a gig, two, three, four, five gigs, depending on how big or how long I'm going on with these videos. So being able to airdrop that extremely quickly is very beneficial for me and my workflow. Before with AirDrop, it always worked, but sometimes it got a little slow, especially you know if I was running out of space or if it was too big of a file. But now I'm seeing things happen almost instantly, which is kind of insane, especially with things that are one to two gigs in size. AirDrop has gotten significantly faster. I can't say much about the new Mac OS Sonoma because I'm not playing with that yet, but if you're using an iOS 17 phone and an iPad OS 17 iPad, AirDrop is so much faster than it was before, so that's a welcome upgrade. And then the final feature that I wanna mention, which I think is just a cool feature overall, is something called personal voice. Now I did a whole video on this, which I'll link down below on how to set it up, what it is, how to use it, and I did it on the iPhone. But personal voice goes across all of your devices. So personal voice, basically what it does is it learns your voice, you teach your iDevice, your voice, how you speak, your inflections. You pretty much just read some statements over a 15 minute span, it learns your voice, it generates a voice for you, and then you're able to use that to do whatever you see fit. So you can start to type out what you want the iPhone to say, and it sounds kind of like you. Again, right now it's still in beta one, It only it's only there with iOS and iPadOS 17, as well as macOS Sonoma, but overall it just sounds kind of like a robot version of me, so it does sound like me, but just not really a natural version of me, but I'm sure it'll get better over time as Apple starts to kind of really grind into that and making sure that it works well because I think this is a great accessibility feature for anybody that wants to be able to do this, especially if they're in situations where, you know, they might lose their voice or maybe they're a singer and they need to rest their voice but still want to communicate over FaceTime. That's going to be a great addition for accessibility overall. So those are some of the key features that I wanted to share with iPadOS 17 and how it really turns your iPad to more of a computer experience, right? Because the iPad is one of the most versatile pieces of hardware that we've seen in a long time. And there's a good reason why the design language has stayed the same for the last five years. It's because it's kind of reached the peak design iPad. And you can buy it as a standalone tablet if you want, but then you can also get the Magic Keyboard and treat it kind of as a laptop. You can get the Apple Pencil and treat it as a design tool or a note-taking tool. Like I said, the iPad is a very versatile device and then adding these software features on top of that to make it seem even more like a computer turns it into what we've all wanted, which is kind of its two-in-one hybrid kind of iOS, kind of macOS machine that's kind of blurring the lines as to what this really is. And to me, it's my main computer. To other people's, it's a supplementary computer. To other people's, it's a note-taking device. That's the beauty of the iPad. It can be whatever you want it to be as long as it fits in your workflow and you're willing to make it work inside of that little ecosystem. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Big shout out to Paperlike for partnering up with 9to5Mac. And leave some comments down below. Are you somebody that uses their iPad as their main computer? What are some things that are missing? Is it a certain application or the way the software works? Very curious to know. Leave a comment down below because I'll be answering some comments in the first couple hours to see exactly what you guys think of iPadOS 17. But that's what to do for this video. If you want to watch more macOS, iOS, or iPadOS content, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando. And I'm out of here, everybody. I'm excited to see what Apple does with the iPad moving forward. Peace.